This is my series called Religiously Speaking. Uh, and basically, I just want to, uh, first of all, let's go into the Word of God in prayer. Father God, I pray, Lord, that you, um, that uh, we begin this out, Lord, that, that your will will be done through people on this broadcast, that, God, that your Word will go forth, that will minister again. This is part two of Religiously Speaking, God. God, let, let this part two series help somebody. Let it also minister your word, God. Let me not get off track, but let your word go forth, God. Let me speak to somebody out there in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, on, this is part two again of, 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 of religiously speaking. And uh, uh, anyway, I just don't want to get off track. But anyway, that one I showed you in part two was forgiveness, right? Uh, what... What this is, is, and in other words, forgiveness to me, you know, is like, I'll read the first page and then we're going to get off that and get into something else. Evaluate all my relationships. Offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me and make amends for harm I've done to others, except when to do so would harm or harm them or others. Happy are the merciful, Matthew 5 and 7. Happy are the peacemakers, Matthew 5 and 9. Step 8. We made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. It says, do unto others you would have them done unto you, Luke 6.31. Step 9, we made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Now listen to this, therefore if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift, Matthew 5, 23, 24. And it says to think about this. Do you know the three kinds of forgiveness? To be completely free from your resentments, angers, fears, shame, guilt, you need to give and accept forgiveness in all areas of your lives. If you do not, your recovery will be stalled and thus incomplete. Okay, let's get off of that. This is religiously speaking, okay? Let me, let me religiously speak to you a minute, okay? First of all, about forgiveness, uh, you know, if you're sitting there holding it in and you just keep thinking about it, thinking about it, having thoughts about it, that, that means that you haven't forgiven yourself. That means you haven't completely forgiven the people who done you wrong. See, the point I'm trying to make, if I'm sitting back and I'm, work, and I'm thinking about what you've done to me or I'm thinking about what somebody's done to me that I'm living, that I haven't forgiven myself, nor have I forgave them. You understand what I'm saying? So, we have to forgive people. The Word talks clearly about forgiveness. Okay? We have to, it says to forgive your neighbor as that of, that of yourself. So, if I'm living in unforgiveness, then that means that I'm not a Christian. I'm not doing God's will for me. Okay? Uh, now let's uh, let's get on another topic here. Um, you know, first of all, how is your walk with God? Is your walk? Are you walking? Because let's go into word about this, okay? How is your work? How is your walk with God? Are you walking close to God? Or are you far away from God? You know. Uh, let's go to Matthew. Let's let's see. God, let me figure out what I'm. Uh, It says in Matthew 16, 24, it says, And Jesus said to his disciples, Anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That for whosoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Okay, that was Jesus telling the disciples that 
we must take up our cross and follow him. In other words, we got to be like the disciples. We got we got to lay down our cross, and we've got to follow Jesus wherever He wants us to go, whatever He wants us to do. We got to do the will for, for with for Him for our lives. Okay, let's go to Romans eight twenty eight. This is a good scripture here. Romans eight and twenty eight says that. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Okay, so my question is, what are y'all living a life of purpose? What is your purpose for this life? This is religiously speaking. This is a word from the Lord to you from through me. Are you living a life of purpose or are you living a life of perpetuation? Because God says, you know, we must take up our cross, first of all, follow Him, live a life of purpose. And it also says in 835, that what shall separate us from the love of Christ, your tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, necklace, pearl, and sword is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep as a slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither life nor death, nor any angels, principalities, nor powers, nor place, present, or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, if we're not separated, and we're still for God, then what else are we doing? You know, are we, are we living a life of purpose? Are we taking up the cross? If we're not separated, then we're still for God, right? We're still for Him. Okay, what else can I talk about? Okay, let's read this one. This is for you ones out there that are, I guess, that are, you know, taking out the natural use of your men and women. Likewise, also the men leave the natural use of the woman, burning their lust, one for another, men with men, committing what is shameful, and seeming in themselves a penny of their error which was due. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, gave them over to a re rebased or reprobated mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil minds. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Anyway, that's Romans 1, 15 through 26. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make, God, people, is uh, what are we doing righteous? Are we living a righteous life? This is righteously speaking to you. Are we living a righteous life? Or are we living an unholy life? You know? that My prayer for you today is, let me see, is to live, is to live a holy and righteous life. Do what God wants you to do, not what man wants you to do. And this, this ends part two of my religiously speaking.